One day, while walking west up a hill in the middle of the forest, we stumble upon Orwell Orchards. It looks like the Orwells have been away for quite some time. All we find here are hostile Mr. Farmhand robots. Alert! Possible source of compost. Potential source found. After destroying the robots, we can creep closer. We see a couple of buildings here. The main homestead to the south, a garage directly in front of us to the west, and a barn to the north. There's still something out there. While exploring the garage, we get spotted by another robot. Inside a barrel in the garage, we find a holotape. Lucky hits lottery recording. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Bennett Orwell, we of the West Virginia Lucky Hits Lottery Company are pleased to inform you of the result of our November lottery game, held on the 10th of this month. Your names are attached to Lucky Hits, lotto ticket 59 28 42 88. We are overjoyed to tell you that this ticket was November's Lucky Lottery winner. It's the largest single month game in Lucky Hits history. You are hereby approved to receive an immediate cash payment in the amount of $300,000. Mr. and Mrs. Orwell, congratulations. A local Lucky Hits Prize representative will be arriving at your residence on November 30th, just a few short days away. To avoid any unnecessary mix-ups, please contact our headquarters as soon as possible to confirm your home address. Now, we advise that it's in your best interest to keep this news from the public's attention. We value all of our Lucky Hits customers, and we can't wait to hear from you. Once again, congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Orwell, winners of West Virginia's largest ever lottery game. So the Orwell family won the lottery just before the nuclear apocalypse. Oh, they didn't even get their hands on the money before the bombs dropped. They still had to wait until November 30th, but the bombs dropped on October 23rd. And the prize was only $300,000. A lot of money, but remember that Fallout Universe inflation? I wonder how much it was after considering that. I get the feeling it may have only been tens of thousands instead of hundreds of thousands. But here we find a bunch of useful stuff stuff. In addition to the scrap, there's an armor workbench inside the garage, a tinkerer's workbench, and a weapons workbench inside the barn. Heading upstairs, we find a duffel bag, and here I found a single action revolver. This was my first single action revolver. I've found one other in my gameplay. It looks great. If my character was a pistol build, I'd be tempted to use it, but I ended up turning this character into a rifle and shotgun guy. And near to this is an ammo box. And to take advantage of the scrounger perk, we have to loot, then press space to search. We find a hole that leads out to the roof, but we don't really find anything out here. Though we can get rid of another Mr. Farmhand. Soil fertilization requires additional biological material. When done exploring the garage and the barn, we can head over to explore the homestead. There is another garage here, but all the doors are boarded up. We can't get inside. Though around back, we find some plants to loot for crafting soups and a tool case. Moving over to the home, we can head up some northern stairs to enter through the front door. The living room is fairly spartan. Not a lot of decorations or furniture, though by a TV we do find a zero-skill locked floor safe. Easy enough to pick. Here we find some stairs going down. We'll head down there in a minute. Instead, we'll head upstairs first. The second floor is equally spartan. We find one ruined bed and one ruined dresser. There is a footlocker at the foot of the bed and a zero skill locked wall safe next to the bed, but nothing else. On the dresser, however, we find a page from Cheryl's journal. October 14th, 2077. Ian went to Charleston today to ask for another loan. The bank turned him down again. I'm not sure what we'll do now. We knew this year might be rough, but I doubt we can pick up even a hundred bushels from the trees outside. Those oil traps didn't do much to stop our moth problem, and we can't afford enough insecticide without some serious help. I don't know where we can get that kind of money. No matter what, this fall's crop is mostly gone. So the Orwells were on hard times. Their orchard wasn't producing enough to keep them in the green. This note was likely written before they knew they had won the lottery. 
Can you imagine being rejected for a loan, not knowing how you're going to make ends meet? But then you win the lottery and everything's fine until the bombs drop just a few days later. Now to search downstairs. Heading down the stairs, we find another Mr. Farmhand. Potential soul. We find a wheelchair by the stairs. Looks like one of them was handicapped. And heading into the basement, after looting some scrap, we find... Their corpses, lying side by side next to a metal crate. I suppose it's possible that these are not the remains of Mr. and Mrs. Orwell. After all, it has been 20 years, and these corpses are remarkably preserved for that amount of time, and they are marked civilian, not Mr. and Mrs. Orwell. So perhaps these are the remains of settlers who came by seeking shelter after the bombs dropped. With Orwell Orchards fully explored, we can leave this sad place and move southwest. We crest a hill where we find the orchards of Orwell Orchards. There is another Mr. Farmhand we have to kill. And nearby, we find a bridge. The bridge is covered with a few ghouls. And next to this is a creamery, some sort of ice cream shop. We'll have to come back here later. This is the New River Gorge Bridge. We arrive on the western side, and it's a long bridge spanning a huge gorge. There appears to be two sections, the road above and a utility pathway below. The apocalypse has caused the road to crumble into the utility scaffolding below. Hopping down, we can take care of a ghoul and we arrive on a catwalk spanning the entire middle of the bridge. Turning around, we see a door, and we can kill another ghoul. Nearby, we find the remains of a radstag labeled Brahmin, and it generates Brahmin meat. So, something weird going on here. There's a Bowie knife stabbed in its gut. I already have one, though, so I'm going to leave it for now. Let's start by exploring this western door. As we get closer, a police school charges us. There's a bunch of scrap and a toolbox right before the door. Here I found some plans for office couches. And the door is locked. And it requires a key. Hmm, where can we find this key? Perhaps if we explore the rest of the bridge. We see a little path off to the east where the ghoul charged us. This rounds a corner where we find a woman's skeleton. There's a fenced off area back here. We can get a Nuka-Cola cherry and loot another toolbox. There's a first aid kit behind a cart. And then we see a path leading back up to the creamery. But I want to explore this bridge. So heading back, we can turn east and follow the catwalk as far as it'll go. Soon we awaken another police ghoul. Here, we see that someone has erected a bit of a shack on the support girders to the north. I hope you're not afraid of heights. We're gonna tiptoe across these girders. Ooh, it's a bit of a fall. Here, we find a stew pot with some tin cans inside. And inside the shack, a sleeping bag. Don't think I want to rest here. There is a star and an arrow attached to this shack pointing up and to the left though we don't see anything in the rafters. Maybe it's pointing us topside? Moving around to the other side, we see a pre-war American flag and a speaker, but nothing attached to the speaker. So moving back to the center catwalk, we can continue east where we find another ghoul. After looting him, we see a skeleton hanging over a girder to the north. Uh-oh, looks like we got to do a careful walk again. Creeping on over, we see it's the skeleton of a woman. Next to her body is a bottle of bourbon and a shot glass. Okay, I see the picture now. The bombs drop. Nuclear radiation washes over the countryside. She stops her car on the bridge, climbs down here, and toasts in the apocalypse. Well, I gotta admit it would have been a wonderful view. Back to the catwalk, we can continue east, where we see that the road again has crumbled down, forming a ramp. There is a ruined bus here, but nearby, we find a chair overlooking the gorge to the south, upon which is a banjo. Hey, hey, time for a jam session. Oh, almost sounds like a Gaelic or Irish inspired song. If we jam out long enough, we get the well-tuned bonus. And when done, we can climb up the rubble ramp to explore this bus. But the door to the bus is right over a gap. Oh no. Hope you're not afraid of heights. 
creep in closer, we can race inside. Ah, we can loot a duffel bag. There's a golf bag here and a bunch of golf clubs that had fallen down to the south. Looks like at least someone here was headed towards White Springs. We see the skeleton of the bus driver still hunched over his steering wheel. After looting his lunch pail, we can move north, where we find even more skeletons, one of which is clutching an acoustic guitar. We can loot this one, not play it, though we have to be careful if we want to save it because it is added to the junk section of our inventory. So when we get back to our settlement, we should drop it so that we don't scrap it. Heading out the door ever so carefully. Whoop, oh, hey lady. Whoa, oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh. oh. And it hit the girder on its way down. Oh, God. Okay, move it out. Oh, oh nerve-wracking. We have two choices. We could go back down, or we can go south along the road. Hopping on a car and turning around, we see a blood bug. Then one sneaks up behind us. Oh! Where'd you come from? When the blood bugs are dead, we can head northeast. The road crumbles down again. So heading down the rubble ramp, we can turn around to see what we missed down here. Looks like we missed a ghoul. Looks like some bloat flies and dogs had a battle here. We see their corpses all over. And continuing west, we find that chair with the banjo. So with this fully explored, we can turn around again and continue along the catwalk to the east. Here a ghoul creeps out. A sedan had fallen down onto these girders, and what appears to be his owner is just outside of it. He's lying on a suitcase. Leaping out, we can tiptoe across the girders to loot it. Not really worth our time. We don't find anything inside. Moving east across the girders. What's that? There's a ghoul hanging out on top of the girders below us. How did he get down there? Got some parkour ghouls to deal with. Back on the catwalk, we see a ghoul presenting himself. Uh -oh. Can't kill him, apparently. And nearby, we find a skeleton and a lunchbox. Inside the lunchbox is the East Bridge Key. So there must be another door on the eastern end of the bridge. Before we go explore it, we can climb up the rubble ramp behind us to see what we missed topside. Here we see a truck spilling his cargo all over the road. Looks like he was carrying irradiated barrels, and they're leaking radiation all over the place. On the southwestern end, we find a skeleton clutching a metal box. Inside, we find a bunch of food and drink. There's some cement in the back of a picker-up truck, but that's it. So turning around, we can head back down the rubble ramp and then climb up another one to continue exploring the road. We find a cooler and a toolbox on the back of this truck. Racing east, we don't see much, just a bunch of ruined cars, until we find another ramp with a feral ghoul. Here we find a picker-up truck, and inside, an explosives crate. Next to this is a fire engine, on his way into a call when the bridge began to collapse. Hopping down to the catwalk, sure enough, we see a door to the east, and we have the key. But first, let's turn around to see what we missed over here. Here we find a ghoul, and the other one that was adopting a T-pose earlier. Looks like something fixed it, we can kill it now. If we turn south from here, we find a corpse hanging over one of the girders. Climbing over, we see that this is a responder corpse, and on his body are orders from Maria Chavez. Paul, I need you to make the monthly scouting run to Vault 76. Those doors have to open sometime. Don't take risks. Observe for a few days and come back. Maria. We recall that Maria was the leader of the responders. We have already met Maria during one of my live streams at the Morgantown Airport. I haven't done a video on the responders yet, but when I do, we'll be sure to go over her story. Looks like Paul here sadly didn't heed her advice, and he took too many risks, one of which was hanging out by this girder. Poor Paul. Well, with the key in hand, we can turn around and continue east along the catwalk. Here we find a feral ghoul. And the door is already open. Someone has beat us here. Turning around, we see a skeleton hanging in a tire swing from the bottom of the bridge. <laughs> 
How did he get there? We find some stairs going up, but before we go up, let's head through the door. Inside, we discover the new River Gorge Bridge East. There are shelves on either side. We find scrap in them. Beneath one is a duffel bag with money. There's a room to the east where we find a map of Appalachia. Here we can mark a bunch of locations on our map, including the Charleston Capitol Building, Camden Park, the Monaga Power Plant, Wavy Willard's Water Park, Tyler Country Fairgrounds, and the Dyer Chemical Plant. After looting a red toolbox, we can turn around to explore a desk where we find Carl's note. Doug, it's Carl. I've left for Camden Park to meet our buyer. Doug, I've taken your key to the west door. I'm sorry, but I can't keep coming back to find new dings and scratches just because you can't resist taking our little project out for a spin. We're trying to sell this thing, remember? Look, assuming this guy shows, I'll be back by this evening. Buyer's a military type. He wants to make the trade while riding the Widowmaker. No idea why. I think he's living out some kind of personal spy fantasy. That's fine by me. I wanted to try that ride since I was a kid. So Carl has the key to the West Bridge door, and he went to Camden Park. The two of them, Carl and Doug, who presumably worked maintenance on this bridge, were working on some sort of project that they were presumably keeping on the other side of that door, a project they were refurbishing and hoping to sell. Those who have been to Camden Park will know that the name of the big roller coaster in the park is called The Widowmaker. So from this note, we know that Carl and the buyer were last seen making a transaction for something on a roller coaster in Camden Park. We'll have to track him down. But first, we can read this terminal. West Virginia Department of Transportation. Bridge Load Measurements. For the week ending on October 9th, 2077, we find load entries each day of the week. Sunday and Saturday were the lowest. The bridge was spared all of the weekday commuter traffic. Still, this week ended in 796,967,300 pounds. Wow, that's a lot of moving steel. For the week ending October 16th, we see a similar number and notice a similar lower weekend trend. For the week ending on October 23rd, the day the bombs dropped, we find a similar trend until Saturday. Instead of around 50 million pounds like we're used to seeing, we only see 478,200 pounds, which of course is because the bombs dropped. Everyone was vaporized in their homes. And if they did make it to the roads, so many people were trying to travel that the cars blocked up the roads, preventing movement. In the week following the apocalypse, we find harrowing numbers. Every day of the week is exactly the same. 478,200 pounds. This bridge has carried the same load for the past 20 years, which of course can be explained because the cars using this bridge on Saturday, October 23rd, are still here. This terminal kept records until the week of November 27th, 2077. Here we find the final entry. And for some reason, it stopped keeping track here. Well, we now have to head to Camden Park to see if we can find Carl's key at the top of the Widowmaker ride in the middle of the park. I will be doing a video about Camden Park soon. And the short answer is yes, that's exactly where we found the remains of Carl. If we walk along the roller coaster's tracks, we find one mostly intact car, and here we find the remains of two people, one of whom is wearing military fatigues, and the other has a backpack inside of which is the West Bridge Key. These are the remains of Carl and his mysterious buyer, a man trying to live out some sort of spy fantasy. What project was it that Doug and Carl were working on? What was it that they were storing in the western maintenance room of the bridge? And what was it that so attracted this mysterious uniformed buyer? Well, with the key in hand, we can return to the bridge. And opening it, we find... It's a suit of power armor! Though in my game, <laughs> it's a little disappointing. The frame is mostly empty. In my game, sadly, I only found the Raider Power Armor Helmet, though the power armor on the frame is randomized. Now that I have the key, I can come back anytime I want. When I came back another day, I found different pieces of armor on the suit. In this way, I suppose you could get an entire suit of the armor if you come back and visit ever so often. 
So Doug and Carl were trying to sell a suit of power armor that they found. Though I'm having a hard time explaining the raider pieces. In any event, nearby we find an end of dungeon steamer trunk, a bunch of paint cans good for steel, a first aid kit behind a shelf, and just loads and loads of scrap. We do find some purified water and food on a southern shelf and a tinkerer's workbench where we can craft ammunition and break down all our scrap. On a shelf nearby, we find a mechanic jumpsuit and two steelworker hats as well as some welding goggles. There's a book here, but sadly I couldn't interact with it. Another one of those strange placed objects in the world that we can't interact with. I wonder if it's for a quest. We'll have to find out later. Heading out to leave, we find a door to the northwest. This leads to a supply closet where we find a fusion core. All right. Here we find another mechanic's jumpsuit and more scrap. And that about does it for the bridge. I had to turn Camden Park upside down to find this key. So I'll be doing a lore video about what we find at Camden Park coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. What are your thoughts on Orwell Orchards and the new River Gorge Bridge? Did you find the lottery holotape in the trash bin at Orwell Orchards? Let me know about your adventure in the comments section below. I publish many Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss my next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come in a wide array of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a variety of colors. They come on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon this week with more brand new videos.